Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and we are going to learn all about the use context hook that comes with React. What we've got right now is an app that shows a beautifully styled uh, list item that has a button that says load more. And when I click this, it says loading for a split second and then it loads the first 10 rows of data. I click it again, it loads the next 10. And then I click it a third time and it, there's only five more so it it loads the five that it has. It knows there's no more to load, so it doesn't show this load more button anymore. So let's look at the app that built this, or the code that built this app. What we've got is it's being handled by a reducer. If you don't know what a reducer is and how to use the use reducer hook, there's another video I have that you might want to check out first. But if you sort of know what it is, just follow along and hopefully it will make sense. So we've got a reducer that basically reacts to two different um, actions or events that take place. The first is when it starts loading the data. The next is when it actually has loaded the data. So we've used the use reducer hook. We've passed in our reducer function that sort of handles those two different uh, action types. We've passed it our initial state. And what state are we actually keeping track of? We're keeping track of, are we currently loading data? Is there more data to load? What's the data we actually have? And um, because it's sort of adding more data, the first time we want to start at the beginning, so load data after the, the zeroth or the first element. But the next time we load data, we want to load after the tenth one, then after the twentieth one, etc. So this variable keeps track of that. That gives us our actual state and a function that gives us the ability to dispatch events or actions to our reducer. So after we've sort of destructured and grabbed the variables out of our state, we're able to render our component. We map our data and we produce those beautiful orange uh, list items for each row. We keep track of whether we're currently loading or not, so we can show that awesome loading dot 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 element. And then the green load more button, uh, we control when it displays. We want to display it when we're not currently loading when there actually is more data to load. And if those are both true, we can render out the list item. So that brings us up to this point. And what we're going to do now is look at how we can clean this code up using uh, context and the use context hook. What context gives us the ability to do is basically have things live a provider, a context provider, live at a parent level and provide that context to any child level it doesn't need to be a direct child, um, like uh, if you're passing props from a parent to a child to a child to a child. You could sort of skip three levels and then access that context without having to pass your props down all of those levels. So the first thing I want to do is, um, when you click on this to load more data, I'm dispatching two events right here in this callback function. I think we could actually clean this up a little bit by creating a function called load. So what load will do is basically just all of that that I copied and pasted. But now this code's a little bit cleaner. When you click, it will call the load function, which that will dispatch the two different actions to our reducer. And it's a little bit cleaner now. So the goal is to basically take all of this uh, reducer and state and the load function out of this component and put it into our context. So how do we create a context? The first thing that we want to do is create a context using react.createContext function. So that gives us the context itself, but what is a context actually made up of? It's made up of two things, a provider and then the consumer. So we're going to work on the provider first, and then we'll see how we can build the consumer to actually use what the context is providing. Okay, so we will create a provider and this will look like a component because that's simply what it is. And it will receive some children. So before I even get much further, let's see how we can take this provider and wrap it around our app component so that we can use um, what the context is providing sort of at the app level down, any children that the app may have. So what I'm going to do is instead of exporting the default app component like this, 
I'm actually going to just export a function here and I'm going to take this provider component we're building and I'm going to wrap it around the app like that. So now you can see where children is coming from. The children being passed to the provider is our app component here. So now as I come back up to this provider function, we know what children is. It's this app component. So how do we actually use that now? The goal of this will be to return um, my context dot provider. So this is the actual context provider, not the, the component that I built. And inside of this provider, it will render out the children, which in our case is the app component um, and all of its children and descendants that it has. So up until this point, it really hasn't given us any benefit. It's actually just made our code a little bit more complicated. But one cool thing we can do now is we can actually lift all of this code out of our app component and put it into our my context provider. And maybe it will be a little bit clearer if I call this my provider to sort of give it a little bit more distinction and honor. All right. So we'll take this code that we extracted from app and paste it into the my provider. So all we've really done this uh, up until this point is we've taken our use reducer hook and all of the data it produces as well as this load function and we've put it into this my provider component. So how does data actually get from the provider and the ability to use it inside of the children, which is our app right here. We do that by passing a value prop. So value prop is just an object that includes all of the data that we want to make available to children of this context provider. So basically we want to provide all of the data that we've created up here. So that would be the loading Boolean, uh, the actual data, I don't think we actually need to pass the after down, so we can actually keep that state living up here in the parent. And we will also pass down the more because we do need that. And um, the last thing we're going to pass down is actually a function. So we'll pass down this load function here. So what that allows is once we've sort of injected the, the um, this context inside of app, we can use all of these things, but it's really clean. Like we don't see any of that stuff going on inside of our app component. So how do you actually use the value or access the value that is provided by our context provider to our children, which is the app component we're building? So this is where the use context hook actually comes into play. So we will do like this and we'll say, we're going to do react.useContext. So this is where you tell um, this hook use context which context to use because you may have three or four different contexts in your app and you want to inject the one into this app component that you're trying to access. So what we're going to do is grab this my context variable, put that here. And that tells the use context hook that we want to use the my context. So what do we get on the left side of this equals here? We get access to any of the value that this provider provides. So what do we actually need inside of this component now? We need the data, we need loading, we need more, and we need the load function. So why don't we load the app and see if it, whoop, Okay, expected an assignment or, an, or a function call and saw that. All right, what did I do wrong? Const da, 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 equals that. Load equals that. Ooh, I see. Go to old return right there. Beautiful. Okay, so it should work the same um, that we, we looked at right at the beginning. We click load more, it loads the first 10. We load it again, next 10, and then the last five right here. But if we were just looking at our app component now, it's super clean. We've 
used the my context context with this use context hook. We've extracted just the data that we need. So the actual data, the loading, um, the more and the load function. And this component's really nice and small now. But here's where it sort of really shines, I guess you could say. Let's say we want to take this li out and put it into its own um, component. So we will call this component load more. Uh, function load more. That. So we're going to return this li. So there's two ways we can, we basically we need some way to pass down this load function um, into the load more component. So you could do it this way. You could say load is load, load like that. So we've passed it from the parent to the child and it all works still. But here's where the advantages of using context starts to show. So instead of having to pass it down and even using that here, what we'll do is we'll actually use the context inside of the load more component. And because we only need the load function, that's the only thing we'll get. What's it telling us? Load has already been declared. Oh, because I have it here. So we don't need that anymore. And now it works again. So we could do the same thing with the loading item. We could do function loading. And it returns um, this here. Well, in this case, it's not really providing any benefit. So screw it. We don't want it. What we could do, though, is we could put all of this data that it's generating um, into its own component. But you sort of know where I'm going. It gives you the ability to start extracting little bits of logic and pieces of code that's being rendered in the app. And instead of having to pass all of these props down what could be potentially multiple levels, you can use the use context hook to access the context value at sort of any level that's a child of the provider that we set up. So just to review this, what we've done is we have extracted our um, reducer and all of the local state that we had living in app, and we lifted that up and put it in this new component that we created called my provider. So that's where all of it lives up here. And we've created a context, and we've used that context provider to be able to pass a value down to any um, children that live inside of this provider. So what are the children that live inside of this provider? Well, if we come and look down here, we have wrapped my provider around app. So app is the children of our provider. And what that gives us the ability to do is to use the use context hook, um, access my context, the one that we created, and get any bits and parts of its value that it is providing to us. So here we had the data, the loading, and the more variable. But what that also gave us the ability to do is we don't have to pass all of the props from the parent to child to child to child. We can just use our load more component and it can reach up to the my context um, provider and grab the load function so that when we click the load more button, it can call that function and load the data. So that's how you use uh, use reducer together with uh, use context to create sort of a really clean way to um, keep your, your actions and your data separate from the code that has to use it and also not have to pass props down uh, many levels. Hope you like this video. Take care.